Thermodynamics, ideal gas law problems. The question to ponder, how do you use the ideal gas law? You finally get to use the ideal gas law to solve some problems here. Uh, before we do though, let's review it quickly. PV equals NRT. Now, that's if you're working in moles and you're using the universal gas constant. Um, if you're working and you know the number of molecules in a gas, then this is going to be a capital N, and this will be Boltzmann's constant, K sub B. So just be careful of that. If we're talking about moles, this is the one to use. Now, before we get going, uh, a handy way to look at this equation is to understand that typically we do keep our gas, the, the, the number of... Uh, moles constant and then we have our gas constant uh, that stays constant obviously so if we divide both sides by t here we uh, see that pv times or pv divided by t uh, ends up being constant so what that means is that whatever the pressure volume and temperature is at one particular point in time um, it should be that uh, if we take the pressure times volume and divide by the temperature, then that should be the same pressure volume, uh, should be the same quantity as it was previously. This becomes quite useful. In fact, uh, you can use this as a before and after kind of equation for the ideal gas law equation. So this one's a great one to memorize. Um, Again, the pressure, volume, and temperature at one particular time is equal to the pressure volume, pressure times volume divided by the temperature at another point in time. Commit that one to memory. So, our first problem. What is the volume of two moles of nitrogen gas at 20 degrees Celsius and 0.92 atmospheric pressure? Uh, and our hint here is to remember that uh, temperature is always in Kelvin in these type of problems and to remember that one atmosphere is roughly 1 times 10 to the 5th newtons per meter squared or pascals. So, pause the video, give this, attempt on, give this an attempt on your own and then come back to see how you do when you're done. So, how did he do? Uh, we were trying to find the volume associated with two moles of nitrogen gas at 20 degrees Celsius and 0.92 atmospheric pressure. Um, so this is pretty much a, a plug-in problem to our PV equals NRT equation with the exception that we need to solve for the volume. Notice in the problem that there wasn't really a before and an after associated with pressure and volume so that's how you know you'll stick with this equation instead of using the PV over T in case 1 versus case 2. So starting off here we divide both sides by the pressure in order to solve for the volume and we plug in our number of moles we plug in our universal gas constant now we have to work in degrees Kelvin so 20 degrees Celsius plus the 100 or 273 degree it's 273 Kelvin ends up being 293 Kelvin. And then the atmospheric pressure, 0.92 times 10 to the uh, fifth Newtons per meter squared is the same thing as 9.2 times 10 to the fourth Newtons per meters squared. So it's 92% of this atmosphere here. And uh, plugging that in, or putting that in the denominator, and cranking all of this out, we ended up with 5.3 times 10 to the negative 2 meters cubed. That's a particular volume. If we put that in uh, to 50, if we make that 53 times 10 to the negative 3 meters cubed, then um, uh, this allows us to see uh, that this is really 53 liters, since 1 liter is 1 times 10 to the negative three meters cubed um, or one 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 thousandth of a meters cubed uh, we can see that this volume is quite large 53 liters or 26 and a half two liter bottles quite a big volume hopefully you are staying engaged uh, for problem two here 
uh, helium balloon with a volume of 0 0.02 meters cubed at a temperature of, 20, of 22 degrees Celsius and pressure of 95% of an atmosphere has how many moles of helium inside? So, uh, and then to follow on, what is the mass of that helium? Remember that helium is a monatomic gas to help you with finding the mass part here. So good luck, give this a try, and uh, come back when you think you have the answers. Okay, again, starting off with our ideal gas law, but this time we are trying to find the number of moles, and so we have to divide both sides by the universal gas constant and temperature. And after doing that, it's simply a plug-in problem here for the most part, um, except for we have to convert uh, 0.95 ATM to 9.5 times 10 to the fourth newtons per meter squared. Then multiply by the given volume and then divide by the gas constant times 295 Kelvin because we had 22 degrees C. Adding that to 273, we get the 295. And that works out to be 0.775 moles, a little more than three quarters of a mole. So to find the mass, we can take that number of moles and multiply by helium's uh, atomic weight here, 4.0026 grams per mole. And when we do that, we get 3.10 grams. Um, if you didn't know where this came from, remember the periodic table. So when you're solving for this, you could have gone on to uh, uh, Google and Wikipedia has a nice uh, periodic table and uh, that could have told you the atomic weight of uh, helium to use in these types of problems. Well, we have a couple more here, so uh, sticking with it. 61.5 liters of oxygen at 18 degrees Celsius and an absolute pressure of 2.45 atmospheres is compressed to a new uh, volume of 48.8 and uh, raises uh, the temperature rises to a new temperature and then we're gonna try to find the pressure so good luck and then pause the video come on back when you've uh, given this a shot little hint to uh, do that proportional um, form of, of the ideal gas law so how did you do uh, remember that uh, this uh, form of the ideal gas law can help, and I kind of rearranged uh, this, flipped this over to look at what happens afterwards compared to what happened before. So the PV over T is equal to PV over T. To memorize that is quite useful in these types of problems because what we're trying to find out is what was the new pressure. So this would be the pressure uh, after we did the compression, compressing here. So to solve for that, I need to divide both sides by V2 and multiply both sides by T2. In doing that, all this gets wiped out, and this is what this side looks like. Plugging in for all of this, we have uh, the uh, atmospheric pressure, the volume, and then the new temperature here, the 50 degrees, that's the temperature after compression so 50 plus the 273 is 323 and then divided by the original temperature so 18 plus 273 is 291 Kelvin and the final volume plugging all that in we get 3.43 atmospheric uh, atmospheres of pressure speak All right, writer's barking because this is the last one you uh, have to solve here in this particular video. Uh, a tire is filled with uh, air to 18 degrees Celsius uh, to a gauge pressure of 220 kilopascals. If the tire reaches a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius after driving for a while, what is the new tire pressure? And here's a little hint or caution. Uh, let's assume that there's one atmospheric pressure 
because in these types of problems you can't use gauge pressure uh, in our um, ideal gas law uh, equation. We must find the absolute pressure first before you can use the ideal gas law. So uh, give that a go and come on back in a video when you're ready to see how you did. So again, this one isn't. Uh, this one uh, seems to be like it'd be pretty straightforward, except for a couple little things here with atmospheric pressure. We start with our before and after, and I forgot to flip sides. Usually, I like to start with the final is equal to the initial here, because um, it that's what you're usually solving for is the final condition. But I didn't do that. So anyway, we we're trying to uh, solve here for the final uh, pressure in this problem. Um, and we realize the tire doesn't change in volume, so the uh, constant volume allows us to cancel out the volume to both, on both sides. That didn't change. And now we simply have P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. And then solving for our final pressure here by multiplying both sides by T2 here. That cancels and flipping uh, sides of the equation. Uh, we end up that P2 is equal to P1 times T2 over T1. And here's part of the trickiness is that uh, this is absolute pressure that we're talking about here. So we have to use absolute pressure in the problem. So using absolute pressure we have our gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure to give us an, a, uh, an absolute pressure of 320 kilopascals. And then, of course, we have our temperature um, conversions into Kelvin. And we get 342 kilopascals for our overall final pressure. Now, if we wanted to relate that back to the tire pressure itself, the gauge pressure, we have to subtract back out our uh, atmospheric pressure to get to the final um, gauge pressure of the tire when we're completely done. Woo! That was a lot of problem solving. So hopefully uh, at least you've seen a few examples of how you can use the ideal gas law. And keep working on your quest for continuous improvement.